Hello, today we're talking about the most common ECGs in OSCE. In the post encounter questions, you may be given an ECG and ask it for your diagnosis and management. Of course, here we can't include all ECGs possible, but I hope this video can give you an idea or be a quick revision for you. So let's start. How to describe an ECG or how to comment about an ECG? We comment about three main points the rhythm, the axis, and any abnormal wave we see. For the rhythm, we look for whichever lead shows the P wave most clearly, which is mostly lead 2. We look for the P wave in lead 2 and check if the distance between the P waves are regular or irregular. We also can check the rate if it's not given within the case. The axis. The axis shows the average direction of spread of depolarization of the ventricles which is represented by the QRS complex. Normally, the normal axis of the heart is between minus 30 degrees to plus 90 degrees as shown in the picture. So the QRS complex is positive in both lead 1 and lead AVF. In left axis deviation, QRS complex is positive in lead 1 and negative in, in, in AVF. In right axis deviation, the QRS is negative in lead 1 and positive in AVF. After that, we also look for the P wave, the QRS co complex, the ST segment, the T wave, if it's white, inverted, depressed, or any abnormal shape, and we'll discuss this later. Another point that makes ECG easier is to know the location of the leads and what it represents from the size of the heart. As the interior side of the heart is represented by V3 and V4, the lateral side of the heart is represented by lead 1, AVL, AVR, V5, and V6. The septal part is represented by V1 and V2, and the inferior part of the heart is represented by D2 and 3 and AVF. One of the most common cases is myocardial infarction, which is characterized by ST elevation. However, there are stages of infarction started by hyperacute T wave, then the ST elevation, which is the most famous, then Q wave and T wave inversion, after that the ST elevation improve, and after that you can just see the Q wave with everything else is normal. Here, this is an ECG of an inferior MI. We can see the ST elevation in lead 2 and 3 and in lead AVF. This is an example of anterior septal MI where there is an ST elevation in V1, V2, V3, and V4. In cases of ischemia, the ECG is characterized by an ST depression in the leads affected. Pericarditis. We can see an ST elevation in pericarditis, however, it's not localized to a side of the heart it's a widespread ECG. It can be seen in most of the leads, like we have in this example. Heart block. There are three degrees of heart block. First degree, secondary, and third degree. First degree heart block. There is a delay in the way of the impulse from the atria to the ventricles, but eventually each impulse reaches the ventricles causing its contraction. Here, there is a normal P wave, but there is a prolonged PR interval, followed by a normal QRS complex. So in first degree heart block, there is only a prolonged PR interval. Second degree heart block. There are two types, Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2. In type 1, there is a progressive lengthening of the PR interval, followed by a failure of conduction of the impulse. As we can see, there is a P wave without a QRS complex. This is followed by a short PR interval, then repetition of the cycle over again. In Mobus type 2, the beats are conducted with constant PR interval, but occasionally there is a P wave without a QRS. It usually has a ratio 2 to 1, 3 to 1, or 4 to 1. Third degree heart block, where there is no connection between the atria and the ventricles. The atria contract on its own, 
by the SA node and the ventricles excited by a slow focus within the ventricular muscle. So there is no relation at all between the P wave and the QRS. Atrial fibrillation. It is the most common type of arrhythmia. The atrial muscles get twitches, not forming a proper contraction to pump the blood to the ventricles. The heart rate is irregular and we can find a one-formed P wave. Here's another example of atrial fibrillation. Atrial flutter. Atrial flutter is when an abnormal circuit in the atrium gives the impulse instead of the SA node. It's a regular heartbeat is characterized by a so tooth appearance. Here is another example of atrial flutter. We can't find a one normal P wave, but we can see the so tooth appearance so clearly. Ventricular fibrillation. It's when ventricles get disorganized signals, so they twitch uselessly and aimlessly, with no proper contraction of the ventricular muscle. As a result of this, there's no blood can be pumped to any of the organs. This case is an emergency. Here's another example of ventricular fibrillation. It's so disorganized, there's no P waves, there's no QRS, Ventricular tachycardia. It's when the ventricles get an abnormal electrical signal to contract. They contract very rapidly and at the same time they can't be filled properly. This results in that there is no enough blood pumped to any of the organs. This is an emergency case as well. This is an another ECG of ventricular tachycardia. Torsado points. It's a form of ventricular tachycardia called polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, which had this specific shape. Many drugs can cause it, especially the drugs that can cause hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia. The treatment of choice is intravenous magnesium sulfate. Here's how it looks on an ECG paper. right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block. This is when the impulse get delayed within the ventricular wall. They are both characterized by the W-shaped QRS and the M-shaped QRS. The M-shaped is more prominent in both cases. We'll find the M-shaped QRS in the side affected. In the left bundle branch block, it will be in V6. In the right bundle branch block, it will be in V1. Here is left bundle branch block. We'll find the W-shaped QRS in V1, but the M-shaped, which is more prominent, we'll find it in V6. As we can see here, the M-shaped is in V6. Right bundle branch block. We'll find the m shape in V1 and the W-shaped in V6. We can see it here as well. In V1, the M shaped is so prominent. P wave represents atrial depolarization. It's usually 2.5 millimeter height and 120 millisecond in the width. In cases of atrial enlargement, P wave shape changes. In right atrial enlargement, the P wave gets taller and called B pulmonale. In left atrial enlargement, it gets wider and called P mitral. P mitral, it happened in left atrial hypertrophy, which happens in case of, of, of mitral stenosis or atrial stenosis. We can see the P wave here, it's wider and has a notch. It looks like an M. Here's another example of P mitral. We can see the M shaped P wave in lead one, in lead two, and in V6. pulmonale. It indicates right atrial hypertrophy, which happened with pulmonary hypertension. We can see the P wave taller than 2.5 millimeter in height. 
Here we can see it too in lead 1, lead 2, in V1 and V2. Good luck everyone!